<laughs> Between that and his gift bag. All right, here we, here we go. All right, welcome back, everybody. It's the Mac Attack 610 fan, Queen City of Charlotte, um, uh, a man that we talk about more than our family members in this business and in our lives is Cam Newton. He is with us in studio. Wow. Yeah, Cam, we, your ears must ring a lot from 6 to 10 in the morning, but it is awesome to have you with us. How you doing, man? I'm, I'm happy to be here. Glad to be here. And, uh, you know, already setting the, setting the tone already. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so his man Jim. Now Jim has brought you, Jim has brought you gifts. Should we save the gift bag for the end, or you want to do it right now? You want well, let's the do gift? it right now because oh. I can die. All right, <laughs> All right. Yeah. present this gift bag. Jim has brought in a gift bag for Cam here. Butter Just so you know, some guy back before you were drafted mm -hmm. walked into the studio and told this guy here, "I know who I want," and uh, I went back to a saying I heard when I was a teenager, which is a long time ago, mm -hmm. uh, when you had three channels on TV, and it was there to be great. And I, I came up with that because I wanted you drafted and uh, had a bunch of these. I didn't have this made. Shevin actually had these made. One of our listeners had these yeah. shirts made and passed this them out on draft night. This Before one. you were even drafted, he had these shirts this, made. This, wow. will, this will not fit you. Okay. Mm -hmm. And on the back, only Cam can save us. On the front, Cam Newton, Nation, Dare to be Great. That's what's up, right? <laughs> and that's what I said, Dare to be Great draft this dude from Auburn, okay? That. That's what I said. Now, He's not done, Cam. He's not done. Man. <laughs> you, you don't get my Air 2 iPad, okay? Uh, I saw an interview you did. Not interview. You had fun with the kids at the yes, scene. Sir. And I know you like all of these. Man, look at we this got guy. butter fingers. We got Reese's. We got Air Kids. We got nerves. We got Kit Kats. And we got skills. You're making me nervous, Mr. Jim. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mr. Jim, call, someone, call get Mr. Someone, get secure, someone get security. Someone get security. Jim, we have a clinger. We have a stage one clinger. Are y'all about to, to, to oh, lock no, me no. up or tie <laughs> me down and ask me the tough questions? <laughs> no, no, he will. I won't. But yeah. I saw your excitement talking to those kids about candy. Yes. And then then when you thought we weren't going to get you, my next door neighbor, Jarvis, mm -hmm. true great friend of mine, he heard the interview and he said, don't be throwing that candy away. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought we will miss out on you. So yeah. anyway. There you go. Your favorite Garbage. candies. Well, you, uh, get, you get we, nothing. Oh, and now you can grill him. People already call us a Cam Newton kiss butt <laughs> show, man. They're really going to get on us now, right. Cam. Hey, let's let's talk about the contract. Because other than your signing bonus, that candy is probably the best thing you've gotten in a while, I would think. <laughs> um, it won't be taxed. Two, uh, two things. One is first. Let's just start first with Joe Flacco went to McDonald's after he signed his contract. Yes. What was it like? Did you go make a first purchase? Like, what was your first thing you did? I or was it the Lucky Charms? It, it, it really was the Lucky Charms. Um, <laughs> that night, I, I was I was overwhelmed with excitement, you know. Yeah. And the thing that people don't realize the most, it's, 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 it's more than about the money. Uh, I think right now is I have, I got the double bogey, like, you know. And, and it, not the bad, but great. You know, you're in a place that you really want to be at, and you know you're being compensated for being here. Um, and you know, Charlotte is a place that 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 has given me hope, and that has given me an opportunity with Mr. Richardson and the Carolina Panthers. And you know, it's time for me to do my part and my due diligence and and, and, and bring the Lombardi Trophy here. Uh, but it's not going to mean doing everything by myself because I feel like the Carolina Panthers is built on the ground up with guys who uh, are invested. And uh, with me being one of those guys, I couldn't be more happy. What do you think about, and you're talking about the guys you're going to do this with. Right. Uh, there's new guys, Ted Ginn, new old guys, Ted Ginn's back. Mm -hmm. You've got, obviously, Funchess in, who you've been working with at OTAs. Right. Michael Orr, new left tackle. These guys are question. I, you got passionate last year before the season about your receiver core being called out. Yes. And it still happens. Like, do you, do you have en enough weapons on this offense to get to a Super Bowl. Do you believe in these guys? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because what, what people don't see is the chemistry. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's one thing, and, and I've been playing football since I was seven years old. And I've been in the NFL, but one thing that reigns supreme is when the, the thought of you um, hurting that person next to you by not or giving up. If that, if that, if, if you don't care nothing about that, no matter how good that person is, but if you have an invested interest in that person saying, bro, I'm going to give you every single thing I got and more, those one-hand catches happen. Those catches in traffic happen. Those uh, blocks downfield happen. And, you know, for a long time, you know, that, that, that's kind of like an underrated uh, uh, benefit that teams have. When I see, you know, teams like the Seattle Seahawks, 
do they have a, a, a relatively, you know, uh, dynamic receiver on their team? No. no. But no. they got guys who create matchups and create headaches for defenses. And I'm looking at our our uh, offensive side. I'm like, well, we're not the Seattle Seahawks. We don't want to be the Seattle Seahawks. We just want to be the best Panthers team that we can become. Those guys, you know, show up on film and, you know, play for each other. That's what I want, you know, people to see uh, 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 about the Carolina yeah. Panthers, offensively as well as defensively. You know, I listen to you there. That's good for me. Uh, he never listened to me, Cam, so he, he <laughs> must like you better than me. <laughs> uh, I'm thinking about, you said what you've been doing since you were seven years old. That list for me is dwindling. The things I do, right. still do that I did when I was seven years old. <laughs> right. So, you know, it's getting a real small, disturbing list, okay? <laughs> yes, sir. So I'm, I'm kind of jealous of you. But right now, when you're in your mid-20s, I want to ask you this. What do you, what do you think you're going to be 10 years from now? 10 years from now. That's a second or a third contract away. Where do you envision yourself, or do you just think about today, today's game, tomorrow's game? But everybody dreams, and you do too. Well, um, 10 years from now, I will be able to say I put myself in a situation to have been played or have played with the best Carolina Panthers team ever. Ever. When's and that going to happen? Please tell me in my lifetime. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Are you sure? Are you, next, you, better, yeah, you better get on here. Oh, oh, <laughs> I've actually picked you to win the Super Bowl a, a oh, year oh, after this yeah. season. So oh, he's got you winning the Super Bowl, not this year, but next year. See, Cam's mad because you don't have him winning it this it's, year. It's, it's fine. Yeah. You're going to knock, knock on the door this because year. Because for, for so many uh, fans, for so many uh, people in the sports society, seeing is believing. But, you know, for us as a team, you know, it's faith. You know, we're not we're not we're not in OTAs right now. We're not practicing right now to just be able to say, well, we're not going to the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? We're not doing the things that we're doing right now just to say, all right, well, we're just going to you know be eight and eight. You know, we're trying to be great. We understand that we got a, a locker room full of guys that's that's yearning for an opportunity to prove their worth, myself included. You know, you got Luke, you got you know Thomas Davis, you got Shaq Thompson, you got the the, the Funches of the world, you got Benji. You know, you got guys that's right up on the cusp that 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 knows their responsibility is just to be a special teams guy, but they're gonna go down there and knock the living crap out of whoever. That's their role. Understand your role and, and, and master it. That's that's what coaches always say. I know you probably had to make a choice at one point in time: basketball or football. Right. Yeah. So I know you're watching LeBron. Yes, sir. Is he the the best athlete in the world today? Um. Wow. I want to say he's the best athlete, but I think this is probably the one of the best performances of our gener my generation. Uh, in any sport, you're saying? In any yeah, sport. Yeah. I have never seen or been affiliated with a person who is willing his team to win. I mean, everything. Bring the ball up court, getting the rebounds, guarding the best player, doing this, uh, encouraging the whole team. And, you know, we're looking at the matchup with him and Steph Curry, but Steph Curry's responsibility for the Warriors is different. You know, he's an exceptional shooter. He's an, ex ex an exceptional scorer. But you have to realize what LeBron is doing right now. This man is putting up 40 points just by the, the fact that he's being out there. And we're not appreciating that. You not know, enough people are. People, not, not, people are taking shots at him are. still. I'm trying to tell you, and it's like, dude, this man is getting a, close to a triple-double every night. That's not easy to do. No, it's not. But you, you do know the feeling of putting a team on your back Halftime Alabama game, right. you do know that feeling, right? That's so. That's so long ago. I, it's a, but you I, know I, the I, feeling, I, 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 Mr. Jim. I, I, I'm trying to tr create current um, memories. Do you feel like you haven't done that enough as a Panther? Like where you put the team on your back? Well, it's, 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 it's different in the NFL. I don't think a person can necessarily have those collegiate memories yeah. because the game is different. The talent is different. Um, but at the end of the day, I feel as if I've been growing ever since I came into this league. And that puts me at, in a comfortable position, but yet yearning for more. I realize what my talent threshold is. I know where I know where I'm capable of becoming, but that's potential. It's up to me to, 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 to create that and, and make that come to fruition. All right, let's bring professional. Because uh, let's talk about the Cincinnati game. Yes, sir. We talk about it all the time. 
to us that looked like a one time last year, and I know you're not going to make any excuses whatsoever, where you looked close to Cam Newton healthy. Mm -hmm. And you truly put a team on your back. It was a tie, a tie game. Right. But is that what we're talking about right there? I don't, we're we're going to graduate from college to the mm -hmm. pros, and that game right there, how healthy were you in that game? Well, it wasn't the, the fact of being healthy. It was just, you know, coach, um, you know, seeing something and, 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 and looking and trusting in me to do what I'm capable of doing. You know, the zone read is, is, is still an unknown in the NFL. Mm -hmm. But when it's running, it's a great thing to do. When it's not working, you know, everybody's like, oh, man, get that collegiate philosophy out. Yeah. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's, 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 it's still offense. Uh, and when I'm running, I feel as if I'm just as dangerous as when I'm passing. But I do have to realize my value to this team. You know, gone are the days for me to boulder and over players and, and, and getting up and, and doing it over and over again. Because, I, like I said, I'm trying to be playing for multiple years, 10 years plus, um, you know, in, 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 in the future. Are we you done sliding head first? Yeah, we need some sliding. Are you working on that? That's sliding every time. Now and then looks rough. See, I'm 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 I'm, I'm very stingy, and uh, I get more bang from my buck sliding head first. When you slide with your feet, you're stopped where you're sliding. Now you're right. You're losing a yard, two yards, something like that. Yeah. So That's when I when I'm sliding. I feel I'm getting every single thing. Every yard I can. More. Yeah, no, I, that's that's so definitely understandable. People don't people don't take into consideration like style with your feet. And I'm like, well, dude, we, it's it's like third and one, like third <laughs> and eight. And when I slide, it's like I'm sliding at the five, well, on the fifth yard, and I need seven, eight yards. So I'm diving, but at the same time, protecting myself. We're talking with Cam Newton, Panther quarterback. He's got his Cam Newton Foundation kickball game, celebrity kickball game, Friday. 3 o'clock, Knight Stadium. Yes. I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to be out there, and we're going to talk about that here in a couple minutes because your foundation's awesome. It's a great yes. cause, and now you can just head out for free. Just get there at the box office, and while there are spots, you can head in and watch this. Um, as far as as far as far your – let's talk about the critics because I almost think, you know, you, you touched on something with LeBron mm -hmm. that happens with you. I almost feel, and I don't want to. I don't want people to get worked up here. I'm actually comparing Cam to LeBron. Obviously, you're at a different stage of your career. Absolutely. But physically, both you guys have such immense skill, such right. unique skill sets, that I think almost nothing is good enough for some critics mm -hmm. because they expect more out of both you guys. Do you feel that way? And I know that we get worked up, Jim and I, when guys take shots at you. We're like, "Hey, man, lay off." You know, we're as right. fans, we get worked up. Right. Do you pay it any attention? Do you use it as motivation? How do you? Because it's out there. Do you or do you try to ignore it? I don't, I don't pay it no mind. No. You know, this is, you know, I'm used to playing in front of 80 to 90,000, you know, and what I hear on the sideline, you, you know, it's uncensored, untamed. Yeah. Uh, but at the end of the day, I am a human being. You know, when, when, when I'm out eating dinner, when I'm out with friends, you know, people come up and say things that, you know, you kind of blink and did he just say that? But you have to understand that, it's coming from a place that they don't understand, they don't know. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to become the best player uh, that I can ever become. Um, and I think sometimes people want instant grits, instant gratification. Yeah. We want you to win right now. I want to win right now. And when it's not happening, everybody's like, well, you know, what's the problem? Uh, I can't blame them for that. Everybody's always going to be entitled to their own opinion. I respect that, and I do know that. But you have to understand, nobody wants to win more than myself you, and others on, the, on this team. You always talk about wanting, you know, you, how much better you want to get. I mean, you you said it in the interview with Morgan Fogarty, and that became a big national to-do, right. you know, where people, oh, I can't believe you said that about himself. But I, th I thought you were saying, hey, I've got all this God-given ability. Right. I've got to get every ounce out of it, and that's what I'm working on. What did you do in the off season? Because I know you went back and got your degree. I know that took yes, some sir. time, and I know mom sounds sounds like mom's very happy with that. Yes, she is. But in terms of your game, like what do you do in the off season? You know, even aside from OTAs on your own, right. is it a lot of film stuff? Is it? I know you've worked with George Whitfield in the past before right. the trade. Like, do you get with a QB coach? What do you do on your own, separate well, from the team? This this off season, um, you know, I've, I've I've come up with something that is pushing me to higher heights to say at the end of the season next year, I will want to be or have a 65 to 70% completion percentage. And, you know, this is something that's doable, especially in the offense. Yeah. You know, those foul balls that 
I often throw was trying to throw the perfect ball. Yeah. Um, you know, that, that, that hurts us, especially, you know, in second and eight when Jonathan Stewart is just standing right in front of me, then Mike Tober is just standing right in front of me, Greg Olson is standing right in front of me. I can just dump it down and let them, you know, do what they're known to, to, to do. Uh, and it's just right in front of my face. Uh, when you see guys like Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, you know, Joe Flacco's of the world, Drew Brees is of the world. Well, those guys master the art of, you know, just taking what the defense gives them. And I have to, that light switch has to click more times than not for me. I know I can scramble. I know I can make plays. I, I've always been tagged a playmaker on my team yeah. since I was seven years old. But yet you have to realize that that's a gift and a curse. You know, when I realized that, hey, I don't necessarily have to do all this. I don't, you know, give, I'm going to give Benji an opportunity to for him to be great. You know, put the ball in his vicinity. Uh, you know, Ryan Khalil, you know, uh, we just got the addition of, of Michael Orr. You know, let those guys be great at what they do uh, and, and creating opportunities with checking the ball down. Is, is, is not hard to do. Now let's let's talk about the accuracy. You called them foul balls. Mm -hmm. you, um, you know, kind of poking fun at yourself a little bit. Right. Everybody with a microphone seems to say, look at the mechanics, look at the footwork, footwork here. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, I, you know, I can't throw a ball. I couldn't right. do anything with a ball when I was growing up. Right? That's why I'm here talking about it. Do you, I mean, is there a mechanic, is it an emphasis with you with your footwork? Is that overblown? Like when you miss, do you feel like it is mechanics? Is it, or is it you're trying to force the ball down well, field? Like, is that overblown, the whole mechanics it, thing? It, it is overblown okay. oftentimes. You know, and, and half the time people are talking about mechanics, they don't even know how to throw. Yeah. So how is the person? That's why I'm asking. Yeah. You know, how is the person going to tell me that Cam's throwing off his back foot? Cam's doing this and Cam's doing that. Well, half the time, you know, I'm doing those things because I'm being effective. Yeah. You know, it's 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 not happening with a clean pocket. It's it's not happening when when I'm stepping into my throw.